Nettles, by the British poet Vernon Skinnell, appeared in the collection New and Collected Poems 1950-1980. Skinnell enlisted in the British Army in 1940 at the age of 18, and his service during the Second World War in both North Africa and France was eventful, to say the least. Court-martialed twice for desertion, the first time after having walked away in disgust at his fellow soldiers looting the bodies of dead allied and enemy soldiers after a battle in Tunisia. He did stints in military prisons in both Egypt and the UK, as well as in military hospitals after being shot in both legs while on patrol in France at the time of the Normandy landings. There's no doubt that these wartime experiences were a significant influence on his world view, as his poetry often explores love, violence and mortality. Skinnell went on to marry and was father to six children. In the poem, which seems to be autobiographical in nature, his speaker explores the way in which an otherwise unremarkable incident, where his young son falls over and hurts himself in a patch of stinging nettles behind the shed, leads him to reflect not only on a parent's love for their child, but also on the nature of life itself. The incident awakens in the speaker an instinctive and fierce need to protect and avenge his son, as well as a feeling of guilt for having failed him, which leads him to raise the nettle bed to the ground in a frenzied attack. The way in which the nettles soon grow back seemingly invigorated by this aggressive pruning and the favourable weather, brings the heart-wrenching realisation and the reluctant acceptance that this is not the last time his son will feel pain and there is nothing he can do to shield him from what is actually an intrinsic part of life. The 16-line poem comprises a single stanza of four quatrains. Each quatrain contains alternate rhyme, i.e. A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, H, G, H, which is masculine or single in that the rhyme occurs on the final stressed syllable of each line. It has a base meter of iambic pentameter, didum, 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 didum although Scannell does vary this rhythm with substitutions of other metrical feet, such as trochees, dumdi, anapists, diddy dum, spondees, dum dum, and pyrrhics, diddy, to more naturally reflect the cadences of spoken English. Other rhythmical variations are achieved through the use of both enjambment and caesura, which Scannell employs to quicken and slow the pace at key points in order to enhance meaning. Scannell makes extensive use of figurative language, such as metaphor and personification, in order to attribute the nettles with a sense of agency and malign intent. A number of words form a semantic field relating to war and the military, such as spears, regiment, parade, fallen dead, recruits and wounds, to create an extended metaphor of the nettles as an enemy army. And Scannell uses this to evoke the way in which he sees even everyday life as inherently dangerous. He also exploits sound patterning techniques, such as alliteration of plosive and sibilant sounds to enhance the violence and the pain, both experienced by his child and which he sees in the world. Polysyndeton, where there is repeated use of the coordinating conjunction and, is used to evoke the way in which the speaker appears set on a one-way path to destroy the enemy which has dared to hurt his child. The title, Nettles, 
is a simple one that refers not only to the literal weeds that sting the poet's son, but also to metaphorical nettles, which are the possibilities for painful events in our daily lives that often lurk out of sight and from which we cannot be shielded. The poem begins with a simple statement that my son, aged three, fell in the nettle bed. The plainness of the language in this first line, in contrast with the emotive language in the rest of the poem, indicates that it is not the incident itself that is significant or dramatic. After all, toddlers fall over all the time. But rather the speaker's reaction to it and the chain of events this triggers. He continues, Bed seemed a curious name for those green spears, that regiment of spite behind the shed. It was no place for rest. The event first leads him to reassess the suitability of the word bed, with its connotations of comfort and sleep, to describe this patch of stinging weeds. Rather than a place for rest, the area is better described using a metaphor as an array of green spears or sharp-tipped weapons, the image not only evoking the jagged outline of the leaves themselves and the way in which they stand tall and upright, but also the ability of the venomous fine hairs on their surface to stab and cause pain. He goes even further, describing them using personification as a regiment of spite. The word regiment is defined as an army unit, while spite is defined as the deliberate desire to hurt and suggests that the speaker sees them as a coordinated enemy force with their weapons belligerently at the ready, eager to wage war and cause pain to whomsoever comes near. Note how Scannell uses sibilant and plosive alliteration here, with spears and spite, which combines to create a spitting effect. Not only to evoke the weed's perceived malevolence, but also, perhaps, the speaker's sense of frustration, guilt and disgust. This is also enhanced by the plosive consonants of the T sound found at the ends of regiment and spite. The caesura created after the short clause, it was no place for rest, pulls the reader up sharply before the speaker switches his attention onto his son and his injuries. With sobs and tears the boy came seeking comfort and I saw white blisters beaded on his tender skin. The enjambment of these lines, in contrast to the end-stopping and caesura present in the preceding lines, helps to suggest the speed and drama of the event, as well as, perhaps, the rush of emotions felt by the boy's father. Note how once more Scannell uses plosive alliteration and plosive and sibilant consonants in white blisters beaded on his tender skin to evoke not only the way in which the blisters have erupted on his skin but also their stinging heat. The use of the adjective tender to describe his skin suggests vulnerability innocence and softness, as well as perhaps the parental love that the speaker feels for this young child. The speaker and presumably the boy's mother soothed him till his pain was not so raw, until at last he offered us a watery grin. Note how Scannell alters the sound patterning here to long vowel sounds which reflect the parent's calming and gentle presence. The adjective watery to describe the boy's grin not only evokes his tear-stained face, but perhaps also suggests the weakness and uncertainty of his smile. The comma at the end of the line, however, suggests that the boy's feeling better is not the end of the story as far as his father is concerned. And then I took my billhook, honed the blade and went outside. A billhook is a large pruning knife with a curved blade and is usually used for cutting back woody material, such as shrubs and small branches, rather than weeds such as nettles, and so already suggests that the speaker's reaction will be somewhat over the top. 
Note how he takes it and very deliberately and painstakingly honed or sharpened the blade. This self-restraint and clear-mindedness is a stark contrast to the image of him slashing in fury till not a nettle in that fierce parade stood upright any more. The onomatopoeic sibilance of the verb slashed evokes the violent and non-discriminating force that the speaker uses as he takes his fury, frustration and guilt out on the nettles. While the personification in fierce parade not only evokes the formation of an army unit, but also suggests that he feels as though they are taunting him by proudly flaunting their malevolence. Note the poet's use of polysyndeton here, which along with the enjambment of these lines, also suggests the speaker's determination and the chain of events that has been inexorably triggered by his son's traumatic experience. The caesura in the final line of the third quatrain pulls the reader up abruptly, enhancing the effect of the full stop to evoke the devastation that the speaker has wrought with his pruning knife. The effect of the coordinating conjunction and, following this pause to start the next sentence, is to suggest that the speaker has finally calmed down, although he is not content to merely raise the weeds to the ground, building as he does a bonfire or a ceremonial and symbolic funeral pyre to burn the fallen dead. The way in which the next line begins with the coordinating conjunction but, however, immediately suggests that his elaborate actions to remove the nettles have come to naught. Indeed, in two weeks the busy sun and rain had called up tall recruits behind the shed. The adjective busy here personifies the sun and rain to suggest that these natural processes, which are generally considered benign as they nurture growth, are instead malign as they seemingly work hard to replenish the enemy army by mustering tall recruits. The adjective tall suggests that rather than their being weakened by the speaker's attack, they seem to have, ironically, grown back even stronger. This realisation leads the speaker to reflect that my son would often feel sharp wounds again. His son, once he's forgotten his pain, is likely to venture behind the shed again, where he will no doubt get stung once more. The line can also be understood metaphorically. As he gets older, which brings with it increased independence and adventurousness, he will experience being stung by metaphorical nettles, the unforeseen dangers in life that lurk out of sight and from which his father will also be unable to shield him. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on English language topics and exam techniques and English literature texts.